This fall, Katie and Christine and I are preaching this sermon series called WJDA, What Did Jesus Ask? based on these two books about some of the questions Jesus asks in the four gospel, four gospels, including this one from the Gospel of Matthew. For the Son of Man came to seek and to save the lost. What do you think if a shepherd has a hundred sheep and loses one, will he not leave the ninety-nine in the mountains to go seek the lost wandering lamb? And if he finds it truly, I tell you, he rejoices over it more than over the ninety-nine that never went astray. So it is not the will of your Father in heaven that one of these little ones should be lost. Pray with me. May the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our Rock and our Redeemer. Amen. So as I've been saying, Jesus lived his life in the interrogative mood. He asked 307 questions in the span of four short Gospels, including this one. Which one of you, having 100 sheep and one gets lost, won't leave the 99 in the mountains to go seek the wandering lamb? Now, to Jesus, that's just a rhetorical question. To him, the answer is so blatantly obvious he doesn't even need you to answer it. But it's not obvious to me And I doubt it was obvious to the audience of Galileans to which he originally queried that question. In fact, it might be a little irresponsible to leave 99 sheep in peril while you go scurrying off after the feckless lamb that can't resist that pleasant patch of pasture over yonder and gets lost and can't find its way back to the flock. It was its own darn fault. The Greek word Jesus uses to describe the wandering sheep is planomenon, from which we get our English word planet, because a planet is a wandering body. This sheep was not stolen by sheep rustlers. He was not snatched away by a mountain lion. He was reckless. Let him face the consequences. Now, I don't know much about shepherding, But in my opinion, 99 out of 100 is a pretty successful shepherding expedition. A loss prevention manager at a Walmart warehouse or a shoplifting detective at a Costco retail store would get a huge bonus at the end of the year if he suffered only 1% damage, 1% loss to shoplifting or forklift spearing damages. That's a successful year, 1% lost merchandise. It's a successful year in any industry. But as someone pointed out, this statistically unimportant wanderer is important to this shepherd. Human thinking is, let it go, we have 99. God's thinking is, I had 100. Where's my one? Jesus is trying to convert us to the mentality of the one. I love that phrase, the mentality of the one. You know what? Sometimes we get this right in our own world. Sometimes we get this right in our own families. We spend all our energy on the one while we ignore the 99. Maybe you have a child in your family that you can pretty much ignore from mewling infancy to sensible adulthood. You don't have to speak to her. You don't even have to think about her. And yet she manages to get all state in soccer, a scholarship at Northwestern, and becomes a brain surgeon all by herself. Meanwhile, her younger brother has trouble reading and making friends and has has you flying over all over town from teacher conference to private tutor to therapist. All your energy goes into the one. Forget the 99, they'll be okay. Do you know how many resources the new Trier School District pours into the stragglers? Kids on the spectrum, kids with learning disabilities, kids who speak English as a second language, the kid who tries to read Harry Potter, but all he sees is page after page of alphabet soup. All those resources poured into the stragglers. It's quite remarkable. We can be proud of that. It's kind of like Jesus. Jillian Turner was kayaking in Cromarty Firth in Scotland along these towering sheer cliff sides and she noticed there was a sheep all by herself at the base of one of these cliffs. That's unusual. 
Sheep are pack animals. They stick together. Sheep all by herself. Two years later, Jillian's kayaking in the same place, and sure enough, that sheep is still there. It's clear that she spent two years lost and alone. Sheep are pack animals. You don't see this very often. They began calling this sheep the loneliest sheep in Britain. And so when Jillian gets home, she tells some local farmers about the loneliest sheep in Britain. And they scare up a huge crane and heft this sheep up that sheer cliff to restore her to her friends. They called her Fiona. Who knows? Maybe these Scottish farmers learned the mentality of the one from Jesus. Have you wandered off? Are you lost? Are you alone? Can't find your way back to the pack? Would it help if you knew somebody was looking for you? A few of us have got together last week to read or reread Charles Dickens' masterpiece, David Copperfield, about all these charming orphans. One of the charming orphans in David Copperfield is a sweet young thing named Emily. She's good and kind and faithful, but she disgraces herself by running off with a handsome and charismatic miscreant who takes her far from home, gets bored with her, and leaves her alone to her own devices. She's far from home, she has nothing, and she descends to the verge of prostitution. Another character slanders her like this, this piece of pollution gathered from waterside to be made much of for an hour, hour and then cast back in the surf. There are doorways and dust heaps for such death and despair. Find one and die. But somebody's looking for Emily. Her uncle Peggotty will not rest till he finds her. He scours England and the continent looking for Emily. He won't rest till he hefts her depleted self over his shoulder and drags her back home. Takes him months to find her. During all his peripatetic meanderings, Uncle Peggotty instructs his family back home to leave a candle burning in the window all night, every night, so that if Emily chances to come home, she'll know she's welcome there. That burning candle in the window represents the fact that she's not alone, that somebody is looking for her. It's a wonderful, wonderful story. This is Princess Fiona. No relation to Fiona the sheep. Just a coincidence. Princess Fiona is a seven-year-old, 48-pound pit bull mix with Cushing's disease, which means she has terrible hair loss, patchy fur, and a bloated potbelly physique. She's a balding, pot-bellied pit bull. She's named, of course, for one of the heroes in the film, Shrek. There's a little bit of resemblance. She was far from the most adorable resident in, resident in the animal shelter in Washington, D.C., where she ended up. And so unwanted and unadoptable, Princess Fiona spent 119 days in that animal shelter. Average stay for a dog is three weeks. Her caretakers called her Potato and Land Hippo. Somebody asked, is she pregnant? 119 days. And then one day this five-year-old girl named Miani wanders into this pet adoption event at a PetSmart in DC. She walks over to Princess Fiona and pets her beer belly and then she touches the furless wrinkles on her forehead and she turns to the shelter attendant and says, do you take Venmo or Visa? <laughs> and so Princess Fiona goes home with Miani. Now, <clears throat> who knows what a five-year-old girl saw in a balding, pot-bellied pit bull mix, but it's clear that somebody was looking for this unwanted dog. People say, let it go. We have 99. Jesus says, I had 100. Where is my one? 
He was always asking questions like that. <laughs>